Happy Memorial Day weekend. Uh, welcome back to my garden. So it's the very end of May, obviously, and I think this is one of the most favorite times in my yard because there's some absolutely beautiful things between the alliums, the viburnums. Uh, there's so many beautiful things happening. The garden's coming alive. You know, this, this is what we wait for all winter. Um, so I wanted to walk you around, show you what's happening now. Um, I've made a bunch of changes in preparation again for my open garden day for the Garden Conservancy in July. Um, so, you know, getting some things done, some things prepared, not really doing uh, any major new construction type of projects yet. Uh, stay tuned. I'll let you know if we, we go that route. Um, but, you know, trying to, um, I did a lot of interplanting, underplanting. Um, I mentioned to you earlier last year, I've been doing a lot of, uh, putting together a lot of containers. So I'll try and uh, show you what I've been doing. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, my name is Robin. I garden in Northwest Connecticut, uh, zone 6A. 5b slash <laughs> um so please subscribe hit that like button it really does make a difference and i'll see you in the next video and let's uh see what's blooming in the end of may let me know if you'd like me to do an in-depth uh video on the containers otherwise i'm just gonna uh, kind of look uh, you know just show you what's going on so let's start right here the lavender falls wisteria on this arbor i cut it back really hard really hard and it's finally blooming really well for the first time because I don't think it's ever really put out this many blooms all over, which is really kind of exciting. Uh, the containers, like I said, I've gotten all the containers in, I've gotten all the dahlias in the ground or in containers uh, due to my vole issue. And if you hear any beeping in the background, that's probably what it is or, or they're mowing today, so. The greenhouse is empty because it's just too hot. The flamethrower redbud looks really good. None of the daylilies have uh, started blooming yet, but all the nepeta is blooming. I have Walker's Low and Cat's Pajamas and Junior Walker. I've got, like I said, all the containers are planted and I can go through that in a little more detail. I also cut back um, a lot of the shrubs this year this is a, a Dahlia, David Howard, uh, with another little annual with it. Right behind it, I have Pinky Winky Hydrangea uh, there in the back, uh, right there, and a Barbary. Lots of lilies. I have lots of lilies uh, in the ground and in containers. Lots of grasses. I've been adding more grasses as the years go by. I've been adding more evergreens, which I think I've talked about ad nauseum. So I've been adding more of those. The oak leaf hydrangeas are all cleaned up. I've added a lot of underplanting. So here you see lupins and silene. I've added uh, also some more evergreens uh, right here. So three little ones, you know, they'll, they'll grow eventually. <laughs> uh, but they're small right now, uh, but they'll fill, they'll fill in. I pulled out some big spireas. They were just way too big. I've done the Chelsea chop on my sedum and my helenium and my phlox and some other things. The pink profusion salvia growing really well. All the salvias pretty much are in bloom at this point. Again, this is pink profusion from Proven Winners. Uh, the pollinators just love it. And that's uh, one of my goals. I've got a new little uh, Cam uh, Cypress here, Camisipris right back there called Cream Ball. And I got a new Japanese maple recently and I love this. It's so beautiful, variegated, uh, very leather leaf, I mean, um, fern leaf foliage. The uh, spireas are all pushing a lot of growth. This bed has undergone a lot of changes in the last few years. So here's a look back um towards the back of the house where is probably my most shade garden then flipping over here to the middle i call it the kusa bed <laughs> um you know the hawthorns are blooming there's a japanese maple kota no ito and again in this area i've put in a bunch of new day lilies a uh, me member of the connecticut day lily society and i have a wajilia here the um 
uh, Kusa is actually putting on some uh, flowers at this point. So that should, we should see that nice and white pretty soon. I've added a lot of the, I've done a lot of plants from seed this year. So I've got ageratum and, and zinnias that I'm putting all over. My favorite time of the year is when these Viburnum marieses are all in bloom. I have the whole hedge here. I have another one in the Kusa bed and then the Hawthorns are blooming. It's just white on white on white. And I just love the look of that. Um, it's so peaceful and I love this time of year um, before everything goes. Now all the Baptisias are also uh, blooming. That one's called Purple Smoke and um, looks lovely with all the alliums. I have tons of alliums. I added a lot more alliums um, last fall. Um, and I'm loving that. They're, they're in every bed. You can see Gladiator over here. I've added Purple Sensation. I have more Pinball Wizard. Uh, I have more um, uh, Mount Everest, which is a white one. Lots of them. Like I said, I have lots of Daylilies here. Containers, and we'll get around to the other side. That's a Cordelin that I ordered. There's some Penstemon Mid Midnight Masquerade. Um, on the... Uh, tower there I have Diana's Delight Clematis and there's my other Mary E.C. Viburnum. Um, again I just love when all the Viburnums and the Hawthorns are all in bloom. Um, I've got uh, a lot of stuff going in the raised beds. I've got garlic, I've got feverfew, I've got the floret dahlias that I grew from seed and I'm very excited to see those. So um, garlic there on the right and the florets on the left. Uh, I've also got onions and shallots and leeks and scallions in the um, raised bed that I got um, from Epic Gardening and um, paper bark maple all leafed out. Things are just going like crazy. Uh, Junior Walker Nepeta here with Purple Sensation Alliums with uh, Geranium Bevins Variety uh, blooming right behind it. Beautiful. Obviously, you can tell I love purple and I'm not afraid to say it. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know. I just love purple. So <laughs> go figure. You'll keep seeing it in every bed. Then in these raised bed areas right here in the front, um, I have potatoes under cages that I got from uh, Gardener Supply, uh, tomatoes, uh, peppers, Jimmy Nardello peppers, banana peppers um, in the raised beds, again with um, plant supports that I got from gardeners. I have another climbing rose in the back there. Uh, all my ranunculus and more floret dahlias uh, are in these beds right here. Beautiful. Uh, finally getting some ranunculus to bloom, but I don't know. We've had some really hot days. I'm not sure if it's if they're going to last. Um, they're kind of sporadic. Um, if you want details on any specific plant, a lot of the things in my yard I've talked about again over and over and over again. But if you need some information, just uh, drop me a note in the comments. So this is um, one of my brand new beds two years ago. You can see the Catinus Winecraft Gold right there. Gorgeous with um, black lace elderberry behind it, which finally has a, a house that, I mean, a spot that it loves and it's getting ready to uh, bloom, which is pretty exciting. Um, can't wait to see that. Popping some things here and there. Now this area, these brother Stefan Hostas have gotten gigantic. They're almost burying the spireas behind them. I've got to get the daffodil foliage um, is still going strong, so I haven't cut it back yet. Um, the Hakanakloa, a nice bright spot back here. I just added um, some begonias, uh, surefire pink, I think this is what it is. Um, and I transplanted some ladies mantle over here. This bed also has a swamp azalea right there behind the um, ladies mantle. Uh, an ilex called steeds. Here is uh, a plant called Coringa Shoma. I don't think a lot of people have in their garden, yellow wax bells, um, with a couple of bloomstruck hydrangeas 
I'm not big on the bloomstrucks. Uh, some years I have buds, some years I don't have buds. Um, this year they seem not to be frozen off. That's great expectations. Hosta behind there. Uh, a huge uh, cross a regal and an aruncus underneath a French pussy willow. I bought that little pussy, that pussy willow when it was maybe three feet tall at most. Um, Diablo uh, physocarpus nine bark in the background there. And I love this bed for the variety of texture. That's a Regersia. I have little mouse ears, a hostas. I have uh, palace purple heuchera. Um, I have lots of astilbes. Um, and just a lot of different colored uh, hostas and different leaves and leaf textures, epimediums. There's still one or two um, daffodil, I mean tulips <laughs> actually blooming in here. I don't know how. There's also daylilies. Uh, Tiarella is in here. And there's a, uh, an allium called Ostara that is uh, very late. And so that's just opened up the other day. Um, we have some ferns back here, and again, I have, uh, this is a ligularia, so that'll put up a yellow flower, kind of like a uh, black-eyed Susan. This is Limelight Prime that I added last year, so it's finally, you know, putting on some growth. I've gotten a lot of, um, I put in Dusty Miller that I grew from seed, but I've also been adding a lot of perennial mums that I ordered. Um, here is a geum, triflorum. Again, I put this in, I think, last year, and I was loving to see, you know, what it looked like. I've got a couple of containers, uh, and they're spread all around. Super being a whiteout with uh, a hoopla, vivid orchid, more uh, big hostas, lots of queen of the prairie, which spreads like crazy for me. Um, I really have to contain it. The dawn redwood is just as always, just looking amazing back here. So this is uh, an area that does get shaded in the afternoon. Then we're walking back towards the house here, and you can see I have a variety of paths that you can take. Uh, so here again is the Viburnum Mariesi, and then I've got a few different containers here, and I've put a bunch of roses also in containers. Um, mostly because the roses don't do great in the ground for me here. This is Olivia Rose Austin just getting ready to open up. It's got a lot of buds on it. I'm already, it's been so wet though, I'm already dealing with black spot on a lot of my roses. Um, can't quite get this in focus. I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry. The um, containers here, again, uh, hang on. This is another um salvia called crystal blue i also have wizard of oz veronica in here uh there are um uh switching over to the left side i have a spirea that found a home of its own this is my new stewardia tree where i had to uh, take out the catalpa last year if you'll remember if you follow me lots of alliums I'm trying to uh, add things that will hide the allium foliage as it's dying because it's ugly, let's face it. So I have daylilies in here, I have catmint in here, um, and I have some other alliums uh, that are very smelly <laughs> that bloom later. Um, this uh, Camerociparis fern spray gold just gets bigger and bigger every year. The burnet, uh, this is a wagelia called spilled wine. Very pretty, so that's in bloom now. Salvia caradonas. Uh, these are firelight hydrangeas with, um, here's Amsonia string theory. Um, I have quite a few Amsonias. I have storm clouds, spring, string theory, and then the native one. And Amsonias are native, which is great. This is another Baptisia, um, kind of a yellow, I don't remember the name of that one, frankly. I've got Phlox here. I know I have Opalescence here. Um, I have some other, um, more roses. This is Eustacea Vi. I have in two large containers. Loose Strife, here's a pink diamond hydrangea that I've kind of treed up. Here's the Koto no Ito, uh, Japanese maple. I love this one. It turns gorgeous colors in the fall, so pretty. And then right below it, I've added a few things, but these, um, a still be, this is Chocolate Shogun. 
and I love this one. It is so different. It gets so nice and dark. It's so pretty. I've got a bunch of day lilies in here, mostly purple, I, pur different shades of purple. I play in the rock and play in the blues salvia from Proven Winners is my all time favorite um, annual. And I've popped that in quite a few beds. I almost bought out a uh, local garden center of all the ones they had. <laughs> There's the Stewardia again. And again, that replaced the catalpa that literally almost broke in half. So this bed was new, uh, well, was expanded last year. It was brand new two years ago. So again, I put in more lupins. Um, this is called Salmon Star. I've got Salvia Caradona in here. I've got um, Bobo Hydrangeas. I've got Invincible. I've added some Fox Gloves this year. Um, I'm trying to fill in some of these spaces. This is a reblooming lilac from Proven Winners, um, which did not rebloom last year, so I'm curious to see how it'll do this year. A lot of like serendipity alliums right here, and I've been dividing those and popping them all over, hoping they'll repel rabbits, et cetera, et cetera. Peachberry Ice Eucara. Um, and again, I lost a few yarrow. I'm not, I don't have good luck with yarrow. The rabbits seem to eat them. Um, these are pinball wizard alliums here. So again, I've got some things I need to fill in in this bed. Um, Invincible Spirit 2 Hydrangea right there. Um, looking good this year. Again, that struggled a bit last year. Um, I have some tater tot arbs. This is a uh, Spirea double play doozy. Love it. This is a heuchera called Snow Angel. Here's a lovely columbine called uh, Krista Barlow. And I just got a new one called Nora Barlow from Select Seeds. And I can't tell you how nicely shipped the plants from Select Seeds came. I have absolutely no complaints. Uh, the hawthorns are blooming, um, and underneath them I have more lupins, um, lots of, like I said, I've added foxgloves to this bed. I've got uh, a couple of roses, Coca Loco, Princess Alexandra of Kent from David Austin, a bonica, um, and then on the other side here, again, I still have some yarrow, vintage violet, I think it's called. Um, but I lost some uh, lemon squeeze grass, the hawthorns. It's amazing in one day, actually. <laughs> we had, you know, a lot of rain um, and a lot of the blooms have already come off the hawthorns since I shot this video, um, which is kind of sad because I just love them. Um, looks like, you know, white snow all over. This bed, I've been um, just tweaking things a little bit, all the lilacs are blooming. Uh, they smell amazing. Um, don't cut your lilacs until they're fully open because they just, they don't continue, continue to open. So this bed on this side typically is pretty shady most of the day. I have a lot of spireas. I have a lot of bruneras in here. Um, Queen of diamonds, Jack of diamonds, uh, pinka blue, lungwort, um, a pulmonaria, um, I added hellebores in here. Um, another Brunnera called da Darts Gold, I think it is. Darts Gold, Diana's Gold, something like that. Um, Cosmos that I put in a pot, and now that I think about it, I better go check them. Blue Kazoo Spirea, love it. Uh, one of my favorite Spireas, uh, besides Ogon, which I know you know I talk about all the time. <laughs> um, so a big hosta that I moved back here, Elegans, uh, an Aurelia that's doing really good this year. And I won't stick Colocations elephant ears in front of it because, um, you know, then you won't see it. Another blue kazoo. And finally, I think my hydrangea, my climbing hydrangea has been here uh, eight years and it's finally going to bloom. Um, so I wanted it to climb up that maple tree. So we have, uh, coming back to, you know, the other side, again, more lilacs. Don't remember, don't, um, you only cut the lilacs after they bloom. Same with forsythias and azaleas and rhododendrons and stuff, um, or the macrophylla hydrangeas, or you'll cut off your blooms. So coming 
up the path, um, more peach berry ice heucheras, sesky gold birch, uh, weeping spruce, um, mini twist pine I love. Um, I still have, you know, ranunculus in lots of containers. Like I said, uh, they're, they're sort of doing so-so. I don't know if I'm gonna bother with ranunculus again. This container has syrinth in it and um, a couple of other plants. I think that's Double Delight. I think that's what that is. Um, and right below it, I have a strontia and a geranium called Bevan's Variety, which I showed you earlier. I have it in a few places. Um, besides, I also have geranium Roseanne and Biacovo also. So um, coming up the path, I have a Juga Black Scallop, which is blooming. Here is another uh, Wajilia called Midnight Sun. It gets gorgeous color in the fall. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I have daylilies in here. I have a um, Glow Girl Spirea in here, which um, is really pretty. I've got a bunch of different evergreens that I've been putting in here. Geranium Espresso back there, right there blooming. Um, that spreads a lot, I've got to say. Um, you know, so if you don't want it where it's going, you got to pull it out. You'll see more rock and play in the blues. The uh, Salixes, I chopped them all back this year and they're already growing like crazy, but I wanted them to be more tree form. And so obviously I'm going to have to go back and cut them. Geums, uh, here's the Nine Barks. Again, Nine Barks also I cut back. This is a GM called Fire Opal. I have summer wine and copper wine, nine barks, and I really thinned them out for the first time in like eight years. They were so thick and so heavy um, that we decided to open them up a little bit. Um, so we'll see how they do now. They're starting to bloom with their really pretty, you know, light pink flowers. Um, I just love the nine barks, gorgeous vase shape, um, but put them where they can grow unimpeded. Another thing I cut back is this Katina smoke bush. Um, I cut them both all the way back because they were taller than the house last year. So this is the second year I've kind of chopped them back. Um, and the, actually the color is gorgeous and they seem to be growing really well. There are a lot of day lilies in this bed. There's um, Shasta daisies, Becky in this bed. Um, lots of asters, Stokes asters um, right here around the peonies. I've added some salvias. Um, I've added some uh, delphiniums in this area. I have more alliums in this area. And I had um, a lot of daffodils here. I had Delnashaw. I had copper image tulips. I had some tete a tete daffodils. Um, the peonies are all getting ready to open uh, really soon. Coral charm, I think, is just starting to open. And um, you can see Spirea Ogon there, the yellow green I, is my favorite Spirea. I know I talk about it all the time, sorry. <laughs> Our fountain is from Campania, had it, had it for at least, oh my God, at least 15 years, I think. The river birches, I've put up lights from Hoselink around the Stewardia, the Red Bud, the um, Hawthorns, and the river birches. Um, and they look so beautiful at night. So we've done a little bit of moving around. So I'm waiting right here. I cut the uh, red twig dogwoods way back, I'm waiting for the uh, perennial hibiscus to open to fill that up. In the meantime, the Amsonias with their gorgeous blue flowers are blooming. And again, a little close up of my favorite, Ogon, Spirea Ogon. Um, lots of uh, play in the blues, Salvia. Um, that Amsonia is really the only true blue, I think, that there is. Um, so we have a poet's wife rose in this big container, and it seemed to do fine. It was out here all winter. Uh, tough stuff hydrangeas there in the middle. Uh, and over here, I have Walker's Low Nepeta, because that's one of my favorite Nepetas, as you well know. And then I have some alliums called Bulgaricum. I think there are a couple different names for this, Nectarosum or something like that. Uh, but they're beautiful. Just a, a very airy, humble kind of shape, downward facing, uh, very, very pretty, something different. And on the other side, 
Um, I have uh, some cafe au lait dahlias that I popped in there with some annuals. The flag irises and the Siberian irises are all blooming now. They've all since opened um, since I shot this literally the other day. And so I've got purple irises all over. Boom Chocolata is not blooming yet, but if you don't have that geranium, it's something you really should consider. The uh, winter berries are all leafed out. This is a Salvia Rose Rhapsody that I grew from seed a couple years ago. It is a perennial and it keeps coming back. And oh, here's a little peek at the uh, flag irises in here. So I have those and then in the back I have a lot of the Siberian irises of different varieties. Uh, more Tough Stuff Hydrangeas here. Again, another Salix that I really cut back and you can see it's kind of going nuts and I'm gonna have to do something to it, obviously. Sadly, the magnolia was pulled out right here. So I have gotta put something else there. I want maybe a maple. Um, I've gotta think about it. The red twig dogwoods are coming back very slowly. Um, more pur purple sensation alliums. Again, this bed, I'm waiting for the uh, perennial hibiscus to uh, fill in this whole area because that hibiscus is huge, obviously, the dinner plate uh, flowers. And so we'll just have to wait. This is Amethyst Falls Wisteria on this arbor that uh, heads us down to the backyard. But in the front here, I have lots of camassias that are finished. I'm gonna have to divide these again because they were so heavy, they're just falling on top of themselves. Um, and this is uh, my apple tree bed. Uh, I have a crab apple here that's already finished blooming and another salix. This is um, Elsa Spath, Clematis, and I have this on a couple of arbors. I love that deep, dark purple. And even after they finish blooming, I love the seed heads on them. It, it's just so pretty. Uh, this little King River Birch down there, I love. Um, so all these shrubs here, this is a Calicanthus uh, sweet, is it sweet spire, sweet shrub, something like that. Gorgeous, smells beautiful, beautiful little flowers there. Um, and this is another one of those shrubs. Give it, give it room uh, because I find it suckers. So I'm always having to cut suckers out. As we make our way down the hill, Little King River Birch right there. I have a bunch of Baptisias here that I've had for a long time. Some are seem to be struggling. This is a golden full moon Japanese maple. I, I love this. It took me a few places to find where it was happy. Um, like I said earlier, the greenhouse is empty because it's just way too hot in here. Um, so everything is now out of here. The flamethrower redbud, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Um, I'm just loving that. And then to the left of the greenhouse, we have um, Mount Everest um, alliums that are blooming. I've got a bunch of uh, irises bearded irises that are blooming now, uh, really pretty, lots of um, catmint. Uh, heuchera. I've got uh, different hydrangeas in here. I've got some daisies in here. I'm trying to think what's in here. Daylilies. This is a, um, uh, check out that gorgeous peach colored. I think it's called October Surprise. Um, I've got a couple of different nine barks in here. Festivus Gold, which is no longer available, I just found out, which is really a crime because I have a client who wants it. Um, and another one called Tiny Wine Gold. Uh, there's Mount Everest. I've got, finally, I think I've found a place for my Enchianthus to be happy because I've moved this tree now three times at least. Um, it's finally blooming this year and it looks good. It's got some nice growth, which is so nice. <laughs> um, and then this Little King River Birch. I love it, just love the peeling bark. Um, it's one of my favorite things. Um, I have Invincible Mauvet Hydrangea down here. I've got some Black Eyed Susans. Um, Mock Orange Philadelphus has not bloomed yet. Here's the Storm Cloud Amsonia, surrounded by um, Veronicastrum, uh, Culver's Root, uh, some more Purple Sensation Alliums, some Betony, um, 
baby's breath in there. And then in the back, uh, Hakanakloa, I've got some more, um, a still be dark side of the moon here surrounding uh, the clethora tree. Got a bunch of heucheras in here. I've just added some primrose into here. The Solomon seal is blooming. I've got a boxwood new gen in there. Look how pretty the Solomon seal is. That's spreading. So you can pull it out and stick it in other places or give it away to friends if you want. Uh, I've got a big hosta here. I've got a lot of a still be in this bed underneath my service berry which is now popping some uh, berries on it. So a lot of palace purple and wild berry heuchera in here. Um, so that's a kind of a look. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, please feel free to ask me.